there. Welcome back to the Weekly Word Outdoor Adventures. Doing a little axe work out here today. You might recall a video that we did a while back on uh, the crosscut saw called Driving the Wedge. If you want to go back in the archives and watch that one, now we have to use a crosscut saw in the wilderness on the trail crew. The companion to the crosscut saw, of course, is the old fashioned axe. And a good one is hard to find. If you go to the big box stores, whatever they charge you for it is too much because you come home and it's probably going to be a piece of trash. They just don't have good metal in them no more. You're much better off to go and find one, uh, an antique somewhere. They had real good metal and you get them sharp. As long as you keep them out of the rocks and the dirt, they'll stay sharp for years. I think I gave five bucks for this one at a flea market down on Highway 411 over a decade ago. I had a broke handle in it and I had to put this handle in it. It's called hanging the handle, by the way. Lots of axe lingo in our language today. Uh, you've heard people say somebody's got an axe to grind. And sometimes you hear somebody say, uh, I just can't get the hang of it. That's axe lingo too. When you're installing the handle, it's called hanging it on the axe. Um, if you want to do axe work, first thing I can tell you, it's not a good idea to wear gloves. You don't get good purchase on the handles. That's a good fancy word for you got to get a good grip. You don't want that thing flying out of your hand and killing your buddy somewhere. And I'll tell you the number one mistake that I see people using an axe doing when they're trying to learn how is if they're going to start chopping, they chop too narrow. You need to make it wider. This one's actually a little narrow itself. I need to widen it and come down like this as you go. But most people start way too narrow and then we get to the middle of the log, they've run out of room. Then they have to start doing a lot of extra work to widen it. Axe is a good tool to have. It's been around for a long time. Uh, even back in the Old Testament, there's a story about one of the prophets who he had his uh, seminary students, if you would, uh, out there at school, teaching them to use an uh, axe and clear some land. And they had borrowed an axe, and the head flew off of it and went into the river. That's what happens when you borrow somebody else's tool, usually, in it. And uh, he was kind of in a panic, the student was. So what are we going to do? It was borrowed, old man of God. And it's one of the miracle stories in the Old Testament. The prophet has a... Uh, the axe swim, the King James Version says, says the axe actually, I guess it floated and it swam back to the shore like a motorboat, I guess. Uh, it's a miracle in the Old Testament story. But the companion to the axe on the trails is when we're having to remove things. We also use the axe, of course, for driving the wedge. That was the name of the one with the crosscut saw. Use the pole of the axe to drive the wedge in the curve if you're using a crosscut. Sometimes you get a crosscut hung and you better have an axe to chop it out with. That happens sometimes and it's never any fun. But another companion to the axe that we have is a tool that's uh, called a Pulaski. Named after an early firefighter in the U.S. Forest Service who came up and invented it. He actually just marry, uh, married a digging hoe to an axe and it's a really useful tool. That's what you want to use when you're working in the ground. You can use it to chop limbs and stuff, but uh, if you're going to have to dig tread, like when we're building trail, roots are a constant problem. So you don't want to use your good axe on chopping roots. You use your Pulaski. And you chop on the roots, and then you can turn it right over this way, and you dig some more, and then you have to chop some more roots out, and it's all one tool, and it makes it really efficient. Because... Uh, Roots, when you dig and tread through the Cherokee National Forest, are everywhere. In the Bible, it talks about uh, Matthew 3.10. says, the axe is put to the root. And it says, and every tree that's not bringing forth good fruit will be hewn down and thrown into the fire. That's imagery of grubbing a tree completely out. See, if you just chop a tree down or saw a tree off, it's going to come back. It'll keep sprouting back. But in the Bible, it says what the Lord's going to do. It says he's going to put the axe to the root, and he's going to grub it completely out. And that's the imagery of people who reject Christ. They never bring forth any fruit, and ultimately, they'll be 
root and all, done away with, and you'll never see or hear from them again. They'll be cast into the fire. That sounds like bad news, and it is, but there has to be bad news for the be good news. The good news is nobody has to suffer that fate. All you have to do is place your trust in Christ that he died for a sinner like you and rose again and confess that to somebody. That's called being born again, being saved, that I believe the gospel and that Jesus died for me. And you'll bring forth good fruit in the kingdom of God. See you next week on the Weekly Word, Outdoor Adventures.